Hello, Namibia, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of NMH at One. I am your host, Priska Nyolo, and welcome to another Wednesday edition of NMH at One. Do enjoy. And we start off today's show with some positive news. The National Housing Enterprise, NHE, has launched a project in Vintuk that will provide housing for families currently living in informal settlements. Sam Shivute, who is the chairperson of the NHE board, says that Vintuk is just the start as they will be taking the project countrywide. Units cost between $92,000 Namibian dollars and $166,000 Namibian dollars. Michelle Nawatises shot this footage. Think about a specific project. It's one thing to have a plan. It's one thing to say this is what we want to do, but it's one thing to execute. That's why if one hear that. Uh, this project, which is an initiative of Honorable Minister Erastus Sultoni, the Minister of, uh, Minister of uh, Ministry of Urban and Rural Development, he started on the 1st of June. That's why he did what has not been done before, trying to bring these different stakeholders in one room. And in that meeting, he said, yes, we all know that a whole nation is facing the challenge of COVID. But we, in our housing industry, we have a responsibility to deliver solution to our people. It could have been very easy for anyone to say that, look, the entire country is facing the challenge of COVID. We know that we need to mobilize resources so that we fight, uh, we, we fight the spirit of COVID. But despite those efforts, one would still be able to say that we must never forget our mandate. It would have been very easy for anyone to say that, look, we are not able to deliver on our mandate this year because of lack of financial resources or because of COVID. But we must not make COVID the excuse for everything. We still need to deliver for our people. What makes me very excited this morning is the fact that at many times people are very good. And for our second video, finance person I do has that today is the deadline for successful bidders for government's development objective switching quotas to pay up. Government is expected to net about 630 million Namibian dollars from the auction that concluded recently. We are currently trying to sign the agreements with the successful bidders because the deadline for settlement is today and those uh, that will not be able to pay we will then move to this uh, next uh, uh, highest bidder and those that will pull out from the process will then be punished uh, and one of the punishments is that they will not be allowed to participate in the future auction for the next five years And now we move on to our COVID-19 monitor. Up to Monday, a total of 14,447 contacts of people diagnosed with COVID-19 have been traced in Namibia. Your monitor today looks at contact tracing for the six days from the 26th to the 31st of August, 2020. In this period, 2,722 new contacts were traced. The largest part of this tracing with 908 new contacts identified took place in the Hardab region, where almost 2,000 contacts have been traced since March. In Commerce region, 760 new contacts were traced, bringing Vintuk's total almost to 3,700. Less contacts are being traced in the Irongo region, but with 285 new contacts, this part of Namibia remains in third position for this six-day period. The map shows new contacts traced elsewhere as follows. 75 in both Kunene and Omusati, 151 in Ohangwena, 63 in Oshana, 73 in Okavango West and East, 116 in Zambezi, 53 in Oshodonjupa, and 27 in the Karas region. 
The daily average for new contacts traced were the highest in Hardab, with a figure of more than 150. In Vintuk, about 120 new contacts are being identified daily. In Ashana, the daily average was 25, with figures of 20 and 35 for Othojunjupa and Karas regions, respectively. That is it for our COVID-19 monitor news, but we're going on a quick ad break and I'll be right back with more of our video inserts for today. And now for our third video insert for today. Our reporter in the north, Tuyemo Haidula, spoke to children's author Tuliki Kahalele Amwele. She has written two books that aim to educate kids about the dangers in their environment. She is also looking for financial assistance to publish her books. She can be reached on this number, which is 081-465-9102. That is 081-465-9102. Today in Namibia, my name is Tuliki Kahalele Amwele and I'm a degree holder in public management and I'm currently doing my master's degree in public administration. I'm an upcoming author and I've written two books. One targets children and one targets teenagers. The first book will talk about the children's guide to public and personal safety. This book will educate children on the awareness in the environment that they are in, the dangers, the challenges that they will face. It will have 18 chapters, but I will specifically state out the prominent chapters in the book. First chapter is gender-based violence, and second chapter is sexual harassment, depression, financial education, and also child trafficking. And the second book is titled Life Lessons, choices of the young. It will have seven chapters, but I'll focus on the most prominent chapters in the book, which is teenage pregnancy, depression, uh, slash suicide, uh, gender-based violence, confidence and self-esteem. So the reality is that there has been an increase in child molestation, an increase in child trafficking. There has also been an increase in suicide. A recent source of newspapers stated that a nine-year-old child committed suicide. And also another print media source stated that there has been an eight there has been eight hundred cases of rape against children. This is a reality that we face and we cannot turn a blind eye on this. I need you Namibians to help me make this a reality so that children can have a voice to be able to speak up against this social evil. And I'm asking you as fellow Namibians, fellow sponsors, fellow fundraisers, charity organizations to fund these books, to make this a reality. You can find my contact details below for those that just want to directly donate those who want to sponsor, those who want to aid in any way whatsoever. So thank you Namibia and I'm hoping to hear from you soon. Don't forget to follow me on my Twitter. Congratulations to author Tuliki Amwele on this very important and special book and hopefully enough sponsors do step up in order to publish this much needed book in these trying times. Moving on to our fourth video for today. Deputy Health Minister Esther Mwinjangue elaborates more on the COVID-19 contacts identified between March and August. This footage is courtesy of Nampa TV. Cumulatively now, we have 7,550 confirmed cases. From March to August, 14,701 contacts were identified. Of the 13,820 contacts who were identified by 30th of August, 720, which is 8.7%, 
contacts positive, tested positive. A total number of 8,641, which is 61 percent, contacts were identified in August. On average, 278 contacts identified daily in August. We notice that the number of identified conducts has proportionally increased within confirmed cases. For each confirmed case in August, an average of two conducts were identified. It is important for individuals, for families, as well as institutions, to keep the records of conducts for early detection in order to interrupt the further spread of COVID-19 in our communities. And in our final clip for the day, before proceeding to what is making news in Namibia, Bank Vintuk has announced changes to its executive. Do take a look. Bank Vintuk announced various changes of position at executive level. We really look forward to the challenge of leading Bank Vintuk's retail banking services and our branch network across the country in these unprecedented times. In line with Capricorn Group and Bank Vintuk's strategy, our customers can expect a number of new developments in this space in the coming years. Furthermore, we remain committed to outstanding customer service for which we have become known for. In my new role at Bank Vintuk, I look forward to implementing and driving the finance strategy and to partner with other businesses to achieve the bank's overall strategy. Certainly a challenge I'm looking forward to. And now we move on to our dailies. In the NMH stable, Namibian Sun reports that speculators who were among the entities and individuals that successfully secured government's so-called development objectives quotas during a recent auction are now free to profit from on-selling to interested parties. Republican reports that most of the pupils who participated in a nationwide survey by the Education Ministry want to return to their school desks. More than 63% of the respondents, including learners, parents and teachers, agree that schools should reopen. Algemeine Zeitung reports that the Namibia National Teachers Union is strongly opposed to the reopening of schools on the 7th of September as COVID-19 cases continue to increase across the country. The union also questioned how schools could reopen if the stage 3 state of emergency regulations only allow gatherings of 10 people. The Namibian reports that one of the biggest tourism companies in the country has blasted Defense Minister Peter Villo for sowing division and intimidating, in, and intimidating people at a time when Namibians should be united. New Era reports that despite emerging from a prolonged coronavirus-imposed lockdown, businesses in Swakopmund, Arandas and Valfus Bay still have to deal with the financial strain brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll be going for a quick break, but I'll be right back with more news from our dailies. Make us stop that stuff. This would. the inside pages of the country's dailies. The Namibian Sun reports that land activist Johannes Kerub Khaseb, 
who was in prison for 10 days for illegal land occupation, is one of the community leaders gearing up to fight a high court order authorizing evictions from municipal land. Republican reports that the first flight by Ethiopian Airlines to Namibia after the lifting of the tourist travel ban will land at Hosea Kutaku International Airport on the 11th of September. The Namibian reports that the country's first batch of remdesivir, an antiviral used to treat COVID-19 patients suffering from severe symptoms, has been distributed to various hospitals. Algemeine Zeitung reports that chartered accountant James Manupe has left Alan Gray Asset Managers and will stop providing President Hage Ginkop advice as part of a panel of experts known as the A-Team. Manupe has worked for Alan Gray for almost 10 years, first as an equity analyst and later as its managing director for Namibia. New Era reports that the United People's Movement has condemned the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development's plan evict some informal settlements in Okaanya. And now for another quick ad break, and we'll be right back with more news. And now for some more news. The Namibian Sun reports that Rear Admiral Sinsi Ndeshimbambangi Pandua officially relinquished command of the Namibian Navy to Rear Admiral Alwendo Paulus Amungulu in Gulfus Bay earlier this week. And Republican reports that a plan is on the table to pay about 380,000 Namibians a basic income grant of 389 Namibian dollars a month. And on that note, that is it for today. It was a pleasure being your host as always for NMH at 1. I am Prisca Nyolo and do stay tuned for the weather and I'll be seeing you again tomorrow, same time, same place.